I believe somebody ought to put those hands together and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. For surely from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Somebody said, come exalt, let us exalt the Lord together. For the Lord is good. And he's not just good sometimes, but he's good all of the time. Amen. We sing that song, we're going to wear a golden crown. It was the Apostle Paul that said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course and I've kept the faith. Henceforth now is laid up for me a crown, righteousness. But not only for me, but for all those who love Christ and his appearing. And one day we all looking forward to get our golden crown. Take off these old shoes we got on. Put on a pair of them Jesus sandals, what they call. Put on, put on a pair of them old slippers. Take off these suits that we got on and put on a long white robe. Singing and praising the name of our God. What a day and what a time it's going to be. It's so good to see everybody that is here on this morning. As always, we're thankful for those that have tuned in and watching us uh, via live stream on today. In this age of cyber worship, um, you could have stopped by anywhere. But we're always thankful that you stopped by and you're here. Um, with us here on this morning. As has already been said, if you would be going to Genesis chapter 3, uh, verses 1 through 6. And that was some truth in what you said, uh, Deacon Stark. You said that was one of the biggest, the biggest lie that had ever been told. They said, you shall not surely die. But I would say that's the second biggest lie. Because the first biggest lie comes out of the preacher's mouth. I won't be long. Amen, 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 amen. I'm so glad to have my leg lady here with me today. Hey, boo, glad to have you here with me this morning. Amen, glad to have her here with me this morning. Amen. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. The grass wither and the flower thereof shall fade away, but the word of God shall stand forever. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of every tree in the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. For God don't know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be like gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, dear Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. I want to give for our message this morning simply the temptations. The temptations. The temptation to sin has been a problem since the beginning of mankind. Since human beings set foot into this world, there has been a problem with the temptation to sin. It started back as we just read in the Garden of Eden, but this was not the first encounter that they had had with this knowledge. Because if you go to Genesis chapter 2 and you look at verse 16 and 17, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you shall freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat you shall surely die. Now, Adam and Eve, y'all, they had free reign of the Garden of Eden. Man, they had, I mean, I'm just assuming, they might have apricot trees. You got pear trees. You got apple trees. You got orange trees. You got banana trees. You got any kind of tree that you can think of. It's just that one tree over there in the corner. God said, don't touch it. Because in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. And we know, as we just said, what happened. But I want you to know, church, that the devil is good at twisting. The devil is not just good at twisting, but the devil is good at enticing individuals. But even in this instance, he did not have the power to force Eve to eat. He simply made the temptation of the tree seem more desirable. This is good to know because this means the devil ain't forcing you to do nothing either. 
But you must understand that he can use the temptations of this world to lure you into snare. That's why John said in John in first John chapter two, verse 15 and 16, do not love the world, neither the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, he says the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is what? Of the world. Now, y'all, this is exactly how the devil managed to tempt Eve, though she could have resisted the temptation. From this point forward, all human beings struggle with worldly temptations. And all have sinned. I didn't say y'all have sinned. I'm talking about from the pulpit to the back door. All oh, have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's why Trevante ain't going to get up here and try and act like I'm Jesus in the flesh. And like, like you know, I don't do it. All oh, have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3 and verse number 23. Again, I want to stress, nobody can force you to do nothing. And God provides us with a way of escape. As he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. Tell somebody, you ain't going through nothing. Nobody else ain't experienced. You ain't the first one to go through this trial. You ain't the first one to cry in the midnight hour. You ain't the first one to walk the floor in the midnight hour. You ain't the first person to have back pain, neck pain. Uh, you ain't the first person to have it. No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Tell somebody God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But tell somebody he will take you out your comfort zone. But will with the temptation also provide a way for you to escape it. Here it is. That you may be able to bear it. This means you can't blame God when you sin. And you cannot claim that the devil forced you to sin because it is your choice if you decide to do it. The reason God offers a way of escape is because he loves us and he told us, I never forsake. I'll never leave you by yourself. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 5. He has proven his love for us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. Now, when you obey God's plan of salvation by believing, repenting, confessing, being baptized for the remission of your sin, God wants us to do our best to avoid temptation so we don't sin again. Now, that don't mean that you won't fall no more. But if I fail because of this today... I'm not going to fall because of this on tomorrow because I'm sorry for what I've done and now I'm asking God to give me the help because I know I can't do it by myself. I'm asking God to give me the strength that I need. Any of y'all ever been in a situation in your life and you felt weak and you felt feeble to be able to help your own situation but you had to rely on the strength and the power and the knowledge of God and he sustained you through what you were dealing with? First John chapter 1 beginning at verse number 7. He said, but if we walk in the light as he is the what? We have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, what? Cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, here it is again. He is faithful. And just to forgive us of our sins... And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now church John makes it very clear. That once you became a child of God. You are to follow the example of Christ. You ain't trying to be like Mike no more. You ain't trying to be like this and that anymore. You are following the example that has been given by Christ. You are to walk in the light. Which means we are to do our best. To live lives based upon the word of God. Now get this. Only Jesus, and write this down because I think some people have forgotten it. Only Jesus did not sin. Amen. 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 Only Jesus on, did not sin. Amen. Only Jesus. And we should never think that we don't have sin in our lives. Because if we do, John says, we are liars and the truth is not in us. 
Since Jesus lived a sinless, a sin-free life, he was able to become the what? Propitiation for our sin. But as verse 7 said, we must continue to walk in the light. You don't just walk in the light when you get baptized. But after you get baptized, you got to continue to walk in the light. There, there's a lifestyle change that got to take place. I, I didn't just go down to dry devil and come up a wet devil, but there's actually a change that is taking place in my life. I got something on the inside, working on the outside, bringing about a change in my life. Now, not only did Jesus prove that man doesn't have to sin, he also serves a great example of how to overcome your temptation. This is why it is so important that you imitate Christ. Don't imitate your preacher. Imitate Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 1. Paul says, imitate me just as I imitate Christ. And notice what Peter said in 1 Peter Chapter 2 began at verse 21. For to you were called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow in his footsteps. Who committed no sin, neither was there any deceit found in his mouth, who he will not revile. He did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to judge his righteousness. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on that tree that we having died to sins might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. For you were like sheep gone astray but have now returned to the shepherd and the overseer of your soul. Now following Jesus' example is the only way that we can, only, that we can learn to overcome the temptations of this life. Which is why we got so many songs that sing about encouraging us to do that. Oh, to be like thee. Have thine own way, O oh Lord. More like the master. We want to be like Jesus. And as we consider Jesus' life, some might ask, Gee, was Jesus really tempted like us? And the answer to that question is a resounding yes. Because he suffered and went through some of the same temptation that we have. But notice what the writer in Hebrews says. In Hebrews chapter 2, in chapter 2 verse 9 and 10. He said, but we see Jesus. Who was made a little lower than the angels. For the suffering of death. Crowned with glory and honor. That he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting for him. For whom all things and by whom all things in bringing many souls to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Now this writer is letting us know that Jesus was just like us. The only difference is you 100% man. He was 100% God and man at the same time. He was 100% man. He is the only man to be a prophet, a priest, and a king all at the same time. I said the only man to be a prophet, a priest, the only man born older than his mama and his daddy. He was just like you. He felt pain. He felt joy. He got fed up with folk. Man, he got so fed up with the one that did camera, took off his belt, just came through the temple, turning over tables, and got upset. But this writer is letting us know Jesus was just like us. Amen. He experienced pain. He experienced joy. He went through suffering. All of the emotions in between and this and that. And what makes him perfect is he was a high priest. Since he suffered like us, lived like us, and was tempted like us, he can sympathize with our weaknesses. And he knows the best way to help us in our time of need. Now notice what the Hebrew writer says in Hebrews chapter 4. Verses 14 through 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest. Who has passed through the heavens. Jesus the son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest. Who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. But was in all manners tempted just as we are. Yet he did it without sin. Let us therefore come boldly now to the throne of grace. That we might obtain mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need. 
Now Jesus had proved. He proved that it is possible to stay out of sin. He proved that it is possible to not allow temptation to get the best of you. It should give us comfort, church, to know that Jesus understands what you're going through. He understands what you're going through. He understands how powerful temptation can be. But we can overcome our temptation by drawing strength from the word of God. By drawing strength from Jesus. So when we start becoming tempted by something, one of the first things we should do is pray. Tell somebody before you do anything, you need to pray. Pray without ceasing. And you know, I was thinking about something the other day, Brother Campbell. And I think about, you know, we as Christians, we children of God, right? And you would think that the people of God would want to be in conversation with God. I look at the Jew. The Jew religiously stops three times a day and he pray. Whether he's having a good day or whether he's having a bad day, he's going to stop and he's going to pray. The Muslim, five times a day, whether he's having a good day or whether he's having a bad day, he's going to stop, he's going to face the east, and he's going to pray. But a Christian pray when they want to pray. Call on God when they want to call on God. Lift up their head before heaven when they broke, when things are going bad. When, you are, when things are going well, you ought to have that same spirit on the inside of you. He understands. So the first thing that you need to do, church, is pray about it. And here it is. Don't just pray, but ask God to help you. Because you can't do it by yourself. You need God to help you. So, so when we pray to God to help us deal and to fight with the temptations that we face in this life, it will put our faults in the right place because in doing this, we are making God to be a part of, here it is, your decision making. Tell somebody, before you make a decision, you need to consult the Lord. Some of, I know some of y'all think about now, man, if I would have just talked to God before I made that situation, if I would have just prayed to God and asked him what he thought about this, maybe things would be different. Before you do anything, Pray. seek the Lord. Yes, Ask God. Amen. So Jesus proved, and we can learn a great lesson, church, about overcoming temptation by looking at Jesus as he was out in the wilderness. Uh -huh. Jesus out there. 40 days, Brother Campbell. Uh -huh. No McDonald's. <laughs> no Chick-fil-A. <laughs> no Longhorn. Flows Filet. No, no, no. Me and Sister Coffee went no Crab Shack. Went no Crab. No. <laughs> what, what, none of that. What, what no Soul Food Bistro. What, what, what nothing. This man is out there Hungry. fasting. Yeah. And have you ever thought about it? Why didn't the devil come on day one? Why did he come on day five? Day 20. He waited until he was deep in it. He waited until he was at his weakest point. And let me tell you, the devil ain't coming at you when you're strong. He's coming at you at a moment when you think you're strong, but you're actually weak. He's going to come at you at a moment where you're down, dejected, and depressed. He comes at that moment because he knows he has a better chance of overpowering you, of overtaking you. That is why he comes at the weak point. But man, he didn't know who he was out there in the wilderness with. He didn't know who he was out there with because every time he came, he had the word of God. He had the word of God. And child of God, you may be in your house. Things coming to your mind, tempting you. You need to go to the word of God. You driving in your car. My things coming to your mind. You need to revert your mind to the word of God. He said, I keep your mind in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on their problems. Whose mind is stayed on their troubles. Whose mind is stayed on stuff that you can't do nothing about? Whose mind is stayed on thee? Whose mind is stayed on thee? So, Jesus, when he was out there in the wilderness, this could be this could be compared to the children of Israel and how they were in the wilderness. But the children of Israel, what did they do? They started complaining, and even said at one point, "Let's just go back to Egypt." 
I mean, at least I could eat from the flesh by Pharaoh. I mean, at least I ain't got to wait on no bird to drop me some manna down from heaven. At least, at least I ain't got to wait till Moses get in a good move and strike a rock and we have some water. You know, I could have had, you know, some means their faith was weak and their trust in God was low. But Jesus had complete trust in God. And he knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that God was able to deliver him from that wilderness. That God was able to deliver him from that temptation. And Jesus did not use no miraculous abilities to provide food for himself. Or to comfort himself. You know he could have did like that and the whole buffet would have just popped up out of nowhere. We th- I'm talking about the same man that took two little sardines and five balls of loaf. Fed five thousand beside and look what? After they got through, man, everybody was coming on. You know, you know how we is. We like our to go place and you know we got we got our aluminum foil already packed up. They were they was coming around, they was coming around to collect the rest. Two fish, five balls of loaf, fed everybody, and there was still some left over. So if he would have wanted to, he could have comforted himself. He could have provided food for himself. Instead, he relied on God and was guided by the word of God. Now, in this story, we can see the nature of the devil. Because you need to know your enemy. (laughs) You need to know your enemy. And we can see the nature of the devil because, as I said, he waited until he was weak. And then come with some temptation. But Jesus overcame the temptation by allowing God's word to guide him. All three times the devil tempted him, Jesus put it at bay by saying, it is written. That is why it is important that you make God's word a part of your everyday life. Not just Sunday. Every day. You ought to make it a part of your everyday life because the more you know it and live by it, the more prepared you will be to put the devil at bay the next time you are faced with a temptation. Now back to our example of Adam and Eve. We learned that Eve told the devil what the Lord had said, which is good. But the problem was she started listening to the temptation more than what God said. And that's what got her in trouble. This teaches us that you must be consistent and not allow your temptations to override or to overshadow the word of God. You also learn from the story in Luke's account that the old devil never gives up. Because it says that he left, but that he would come back again at a more opportune time. The devil said, you know what? I I tried my best today. I just knew I was going to get you. You think you're standing now. You wait. I got something. Let me go back here in my arsenal. I'm going to go back and I'm going to dig because I know everything about that. Look, look, I know what makes you tick. I know what bothers you. I know what threatens you. I know what makes you nervous. I'm going to come back at a more opportune time and I have something for you then. But then he will come back. So if the devil would continually go after Jesus, you shouldn't be surprised that he's continuously coming after you on the job. In your own house, in your family, in your relationship. He's continuously coming up against you. That is why you got to stay prepared. Because you never know when those moments of temptation are going to come. And another thing that we can learn about temptation. Is that each temptation that we defeat makes us stronger. And it makes us more able to handle the things that we are going to face in the future. Now just remember. When you resist the devil in faith, he ain't got no choice but to flee. I said, when you resist, I ain't say take him out to lunch. I ain't say mow his grass. I ain't say invite him over to play spades. I ain't say none of that. Resist the devil and he ain't got no choice but to flee. Jesus had already struck a hard blow to the devil by defeating death on the cross. When Jesus comes again, he will completely defeat the devil. Y'all know this is his domain, right? Y'all know, y'all know that's why, you know, the Bible says that we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness that is set up at high places. We had a fight. You know, every day of your life, you fight in church. When you get up every morning, there's a fight because you got to make a choice. 
am I going to do what's wrong or am I going to do what's right? Yeah. I, I, am I going to go left or am I going to go right? Every day of your life, you are making choices. Notice how Peter encouraged those who are suffering and facing trials in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. He said, in this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Now the battle that we are fighting against, sin, is not an easy fight. It's not a, Trevante is not up here to tell you that it's a walk in the park. It is not easy. But it is worth it, church. Because when we win, we gain the salvation of our souls. Tell somebody, if you lose your soul, it's your fault. What happens when we fail and we take the devil's bait and we sin? Is the war over? No. The war ain't over. It's not. Now the devil may have won the battle, but he'll never win the war. Because we can stand back and if we come to God with a repentant heart, he will wipe away the sins from our lives. And what we got to continue to repent. That's the problem with a lot of folk. They don't believe what they're doing is wrong. So they don't see no need to repent. A lot of folk in the church been given over to a reprobate mind for years and they just don't know it. Doing wrong and don't see no wrong in it. Doing, hey, you know, I've been doing this for so long, I've become accustomed to it. I don't see no need to change it. It's a bad place to be in. When you can see everybody else. In. And that's our problem. We spend so much time. What shoes you wearing? What kind of mask you got on? What kind of top you got? Well, I wonder what's going on in your life. I wonder what. We spend so much time trying to figure out other people and deal with other folks. We can see the moat in our brother's eye. But you can't even see the beam that's in yours. David said, David said, have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. According to the multitude of your tender mercies, here it is, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions. That's the good thing. David said, you know what, God? I ain't trying to pretend to be something that I am not. I acknowledge my transgressions. I acknowledge my wrongdoing. I acknowledge that I have fallen and I recognize you are the only one that can pick me up, that can wash me up, make me clean. Anybody know that God will pick you up? He'll turn you around, then he'll place your feet on a rock solid ground, and then he'll establish your goings. So you need not forget that when you allow a temptation to cause you to sin, you have no reason to allow it to defeat you. Because God understands, here it is, you aren't perfect. Aren't you glad, and we talked about this a little bit on Wednesday night, we was talking about the old law. And if you were living under the old law, you couldn't keep the law partially, you had to keep it 100%. But now we have grace, and we got mercy. Grace is God giving us those things that we do not deserve. Mercy is God keeping from us those things that we do deserve. And I'm so thankful now that when you do fall down, that is not the end. But God gives us the opportunity to come to him and say, I've sinned against you, Lord. I admit that I've done wrong just like the prodigal son. I'm on my way back home now on my bending knees begging you, save this soul of mine. So please forgive me, Jesus. And try me one more time. Now, Lord, I know I'm saying this, but tomorrow I'm going to fall again. But guess what? I'm coming right back, Lord, because I acknowledge my transgressions. And this is why the Lord is always there for you. 
because he knows you are human. He knows you are feeble. He knows you are bound to fall. But Jesus said, if you lean on me, I'm going to let you fall. Jesus said, if you trust in me and you put your faith in me, stop trusting in yourself and your wisdom and your, put your faith in me. Put your faith in me. That's why the Lord has always been there. He is merciful. That's one of the characteristics that I most love about God. He's long suffering. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Yeah, yes, sir. And you have a lot of people in the religious world. They say, man, been over 2,000 years. Lord, what you waiting on? Man, you need to be grateful. Lord, give us 2,000 more. Lord, can I get 10? What? You know? You ought to be glad that God is merciful. Because be real with yourself. If he came now, half of us wouldn't be ready. Be real with yourself. If he came right now, if, if, if the rapture would have happened right now, I wonder how many of us going to be like, Lord, did you forget my name? Lord, like, who calling the road today? Is Judas got the valley? Like, what? What's going on? You're missing somebody. God is merciful. The Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So God, church, is just giving you time. He's just giving you time. He's giving you time. Take advantage of the time that you have. How much time you got left, you don't know. Take advantage of the time that you got right now. So many of us, we got it messed up. You think you're going to be here forever. You think you got all the time in the world to get things right. Think you got all the time in the world to go back and ask folk to forgive you. Man, why you got time right now, make that stuff right. Life is but a vapor. It appears for a little while. And soon, it vanishes away it's like a little blade of grass you knowing this season is up and a while ago it just withers and it dies and it goes away you are going to sin church you hear what i said you ain't jesus you're gonna fall but don't let your sin have rule over you don't let your temptations have rule yes. over you. For with God, all things are possible. If God be for me, he's more than the whole world again. If I got God on my side, I can climb this mountain. If I got God on my side, I can make it through this valley. If I got God on my side, I can make it through this valley of despair and depression with God. But even with God on your side, church, that ain't going to stop the devil. No. You remember in the book of Job, chapter number one, um, where it talks about the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also with them. Just imagine that. <laughs> Satan hanging out with church folk. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't even recognize him. I wonder how many devils you in cahoots with and you don't even know The sons of God came down to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also with them. And the king was going around the table. And he had these men giving him reports about the things that were going on in the land. And when he got over there to Satan, you know, he said, Satan, you know, from where have thou come? Satan said, I've been roaming the earth. Seeking whom I may devour. And apparently, he had already got the sons of God. Because they didn't even recognize he was the devil. The son of God came down and said, and he said, I've been walking to and fro, seeking whom I may devour. And do y'all know he's still walking to and fro? Yeah. Yeah. He's still walking to and fro. Yeah. The devil know you. He know you. He knows your temptations. He knows your desires. He knows what makes you weak. And he'll use that against you. Just like a, a lion out there in the jungle. And you might see some, 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 some food coming by. He ain't necessarily looking for the biggest one. 
if I can find a little baby in the crowd, like if I can, if I can find one look like he got a little limp in his leg, you know, I'm a, you know that, that one it looks like easy prey. That one looks like someone that I can get easily and I'm going to come after them. Church, you got to stand strong. Stand strong. Not on yourself, but on God. Stand on his word. You ought to have a solid foundation in the word of God. And if you have a solid foundation in God's word, you can stand against that stuff. You can stand. And having done all to stand, you just keep on standing. When you don't understand, you just keep on things. Don't make sense. You just stand. Allow God to work in your life. Stop trying to deal with it by yourself. You realize now you can't do anything about it. Been battling with that thing for years. Still ain't overcame it. Still ain't dealt with it. Give it to the Lord. You sang it, do it. Take your burdens to the Lord. And leave them there. Those sins that don't so easily ensnare you and beset you, give it to God. Those temptations that take you outside of the will of God, give it to God and allow God to deal with it. He said in the word, he said, cast all your cares upon me. Because I, he didn't say, you keep 30 and give me 70. He said, cast all your cares upon me. Because I care for you. I care about what you're dealing with. I care about what you're going through. Well, God, how can you care about me and you allow me to go through it? What we say the other week, it was necessary. Yes. It's necessary for you, to deal, for you to deal with it, for you to go through it, for you to deal with that thing, for you to be able to overcome it so you will be able to be strong. Yes, Lord. So you will be able to stand assuredly on the word of God. I know he is a deliverer. I know he is a sustainer. I know he is a way. Man, ain't nobody got to tell me God will make a way. I know for myself, God will make a way. And if he's made a way for me before, why do I think that he can't get me through this thing? Why do I think he can't give me the power to overcome this if he's allowed me, if he's given me the power? One little thing God said, that one little bush over there, that one little tree over there in the corner. Don't eat of it. Don't even touch it. Because in the day that you eat of it, because oh, and, and, and in the very sense of him saying, don't eat it or touch it, because once you touch it, you're going to be tempted to eat of it. So now you're tempting yourself. He said, he said, he said, don't eat of it, don't touch it. Because in the day, he said, you shall surely die. Say to say, well, you yeah. You shall not surely die. One little word. You shall not surely die. And you see, because of the decision that they made, we are in the situation that we are in right now. Because of what they did. So, can you see how sin don't just affect you? But it affects people that are around you. Church, we got to be there for one another. Everybody ain't strong. Everybody can't handle life. Everybody can't handle the struggles of life. That's why the Bible says that the strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. But I can't help you with nothing if you won't open up. I can't help you with nothing if you just want to make like you're doing good and everything is all right. When you are really battling on the inside of yourself. With temptation, with, with sins, and with snare. We ought to be there for one another Amen. and help each other. If I see you're struggling in some area, I need to be there for you. Yeah. If, if, if I may be strong in that area, I may be able to help you out to better one another. Iron sharpen his iron. That's why, that's why it, it, I, I don't never understand. People be in the church, but they ain't got no friends in the church. You need people around you that can get a prayer from God. I don't hear nobody. You need, you need people around you that when you don't believe, they say, I still believe the word of God. You need people around you that even though they can't see what you see, they say, man, I believe in you. I'm going to push you for You need people around you that don't just know about God, but know God. Because it's going to be some times you don't feel like praying for yourself. That's going to be some times you're going to be so weak, your mouth don't even know the words to say. Yes, yes. 
And I don't know about you, Abby Vincent, but I need somebody I can call up and say, hey, bro. I need, I, I need you to, I don't need you to, I don't need you to just, Lord, Lord, I need you to get down on your knee. I need you to go before the throne of God. I need you to talk to the master on my behalf. And I need friends that if you see me going wrong, tell me. Because do you know I could be in and not know that what I'm doing is going to end up bad. And you're supposed to be my brother and sister in Christ. And you're just going to let me break my toe, break my leg, hurt my foot, go through that pain, deal with that. you just going to let me go through it when you could have told me something that was going to help me. But we don't want to do that. Because when the shoe gets on the other foot, you don't want nobody calling you out. When the shoe get on the other foot, you don't want nobody coming up. Hey, hey man, now you know. Yes, Come on now, you know. You don't want nobody doing that to you. But that's real love. Yes. Real love will warn you. Yes. What the Bible said, warning, couple for destruction. Yes. If I see you making a bad move, Amen. Hey that's a bad move. Wrong, amen. That's it. Look, it, it, even if you may not like it, cool. We'll still we'll go. We'll, you come on. You still come over, play cards. We'll still have a good time. You know. But even if you don't like it, because of our relationship, because you are my brother, you are my sister in Christ. Even though you might not speak to me again, I got. It's cool. You know what? But I'm gonna tell you what you need to hear. I'm gonna tell you the information that you need so you don't fall into the trap. So you don't yes. fall into it. Yes. Warn each other. Yes. Because what they are going through, church, you may have been through the same thing. Yes. So instead of sitting back and just waiting on them to fall, help them. Yes. Help them. Yes. Encourage them. Yes, you know, we do a good job at discouraging. We don't do a good enough job at encouraging. Let somebody trip and fall. Oh, I knew you wasn't about nothing. I knew I was just waiting on the moment for you to fall. Oh, he ain't know he this and that. Just waiting on the moment yeah. that you can pour water on a drowning man. Mercy. Watch out. Be there for one another. Yes. Amen. Because can I tell you something? You're going to need somebody to be there for you. Yeah. And you need to start treating folk right. Start talking to folks like you got some sense. Because you never know who have changed your bed pain. You never know who gonna have to come and feed you. You never know who gonna have to do something for you. Treat everybody right. What the Bible said, do unto others. As you would have them do unto But that only work with it's including you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now not when it's with other people, it's just when it's including me. Treat every right, right? Do good unto all. Be there for one another. Encourage one another. Warn when it's necessary. Rebuke when it's necessary. Some folks, you can't rebuke them. You won't see them no more. <laughs> you know, so I man, I remember, I remember, girl, I remember um, under my minister back home, I remember one Sunday, came time for the Lord's Supper, and it was a brother, I know he hadn't been there in a month of Sundays. Come time for the Lord's Supper, he first one up. My preacher in the microphone said, brother, you need to sit down. Everybody, who? Why is he telling him that? What kind of example is he said? You haven't been present. You haven't been active. So why is it that you think you can just come and do the work of God and the will of God and you're not committed? I'm going to tell you the truth whether you like it or not. You, you, need, you can't do it like that. You got to be committed. You got to be 100% in with God. I'm going to be absent without leave for a year. Then come in and turn to page 310. How's that supposed to work? 
You ain't been on them four jobs, ain't showed up to work in three, four months. And think you just gonna come in and your badge just gonna clock you in. No, bro, you been out of here. You been fine. You been gone. You been got rid of. <laughs> you gotta be devoted, church. You gotta commit yourself. You know, some folk ain't never committed themselves to nothing. But the word. It's stress. Plan. Let it go, church. God is here. God is ready, willing, and able to help you. To aid you in what you're dealing with. Can I tell you something? You ain't got to go through it by yourself. And even if none of us are able to understand, even if none of us are able to help you, I know one that both knows and is able. Matter of fact, he's not just able, he's what? He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think according to the power that works in us. He's able. If you trust him, he's he'll able. If you believe in him, if you just give it all to him, he's able to deal with it. But so many of us, we'll, we'll bury the hatchet, but we leave the hammer sticking out the ground. Because God, you, I gave you two weeks to deal with it. It's week four and you ain't doing anything with it. I'm going, maybe I can do something with it. You ain't doing it. Give it to God and let him deal with it. If you done gave them folk over to God, stop dealing with them. Let God handle the situation. Let God deal with it. Stop trying to get going back and forward. Through to that man, I'm going to leave it alone. Now you ran back over here. I'm going to get out of this. Now I ran back over here. Give it to God. And when you say you're going to do something, be serious about it. The yeah. yeah. Bible says it's a bad thing to make a vow to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And knock it, Lord, this year, I'm going to be faithful. Mm -hmm. Then keep the vow. Yeah. Lord, this year, I'm going to be more active. Then keep the vow. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, this year, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. But it still hasn't happened. Has happen. And when it doesn't happen, we got every excuse in the world that we can use. Mm -hmm. Got every excuse in the world for our, for our shortcuts, for our sin. It, it reminds me of this police officer uh, that was uh, one day he was passing by the local donut shop. And he said, uh, <laughs> he said, Lord, I, I know I'm working, I'm trying to wash my feet. I know I'm working on my weight. But Lord, <laughs> But Lord, if you want me to have one of them donuts, you'll give me a spot right in front of the door. And lo and behold, his 11th time around the block, there it was. <laughs> Can you see the extent that we are willing to go for our desires? The extent that you're willing to go for your wants. Things that you don't really, like we talked about last week, things that you don't really need, you're just being greedy. The extent that you're, you're willing to go all the way for that, but won't come part of the way to God. You just want God to just come out there and just pick you up and, oh, and just wash you up and baby you up and then wrap you up in cotton so you don't get hurt no more. You got to make a step. There has to be a decision on your part that I'm going to be real about this thing. Lord, I'm giving you this. Lord, I'm going to let you deal with this situation. I'm going to let you handle this. There got to be something done on your part. And let me, when you take one step, he'll take two. When, when you make a move, God's going to do his part. But he's waiting on you. He's waiting on you to make your decision. He's waiting on you to do what it is that you need to do. The temptations ain't going nowhere. No, sir. No, no. no, sir. They're not going anywhere. No, sir. They may leave for a season. But they'll be back. Right. At a more opportune time. Yeah. And when they come back, they'll be stronger. When they come back, they'll be greater. So in the time of them leaving and coming back, what you need to be doing? Preparing yourself. So just like he came back stronger, man, you didn't know why you was away. I was working on myself. I was getting myself ready. I am ready and I am prepared because I am locked and loaded. Not with a 48, not with a 38, with the word of God. 
Even though I might need that for certain situations, I need the word of God to deal with certain situations. God's word is able. It is able to keep you and sustain you. When you feel like you're falling, it's able to hold you up. So the next time you're tempted to fall, the next time you're tempted to fall into that snare, what's the first thing you'll do? Pray. And after you pray, in your prayer, before you end your prayer, Lord, I can't do it by myself. So I'm asking you, Father, help me. I can't, I can't make it. I can't do it by myself. I need you to help me with this situation. And if you ask God, he'll give it. He'll get, he is ready, ready, willing, and able to help the church. He's just waiting on you this morning. He's waiting. On, he's standing at the door of your heart, and he's knocking. He's knocking. Come from the loathsome way of sin, and let me hide you in the blood of Jesus. Come, for the Lord will take you in. Let him hide you in the blood of Jesus. Y'all living in the same world I'm living in. You know it's crazy. As, as Deacon Starks mentioned on here this morning, you got 13, 14 year olds driving getaway cars. Yeah. Committing murders and things like that. Man, what has happened? Sin. That's the problem with the world. Sin. Good has become evil and evil has become good. But we as the people of God, the children of God, got to hold up the blood stain banner of Jesus. Continue to tell people what it is that they need to do to have their soul saved. Because this life won't last forever. You got to prepare for what's coming next. And Jesus said, I've gone away to prepare a place for you. If I go, come again, I receive you unto myself that where I am, you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said, Father, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, you're looking at the way. You're looking at the truth. You're looking at the light. No man can come to the Father except he come by me. Somebody this morning need to come to Jesus. Come by hearing his word, believing the same. Repenting of your sins, confessing Christ as your Savior, being baptized for the remission of your sin. Have your sins washed away, done away with, never come up before you in this life, neither the life that is to come. And the Lord himself will add you to his body. Maybe you're here today and you're already a Christian, but you're struggling with sin. You're struggling with your temptation. Let us pray for you. The Bible says that the prayers of the righteous, they avail as much. So if you know you need something today, don't leave here without it. Because this may Amen. be the last time. May be the last time. You just don't know. So while the blood is running warm in your veins, while you have this moment, why not come to Jesus now as together we stand and sing the song of invitation. Sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. Oh.